Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hashim Ali Khan. Last video, eight problems I've completed on financial management. In this video, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, four more problems I'm going to complete in this video. So the subject of financial management is very interesting. So the subject is there not only in graduation, but also in post-graduation, in professional courses. Almost every course we will have this subject of financial management because it is very, very important. The financial management is concerned with managing the funds. Funds are one of the important resources which are used in every business. So proper utilization of fund is compulsory. So what are the basic management principles to be followed in managing the funds that is there in financial management. So already three videos I have uploaded on theory regarding financial management. I will explain you the meaning of financial management, risk, return, then financial instruments, then cost of capital, all these things. If you want the, to get a perfect knowledge, watch all the theory videos, then you come to the problem. Definitely you can enjoy learning because I'm putting my hundred percent in explaining each and every point Each and every point I explaining in detail So before starting the ninth problem I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which are given in the link under my description Always keep it ready take the screenshot of these uh, four problems then I'll explain all the points in detail Come on, see the problem number nine. Following information related to two securities X and Y in different economic conditions. The economic conditions are given recession, normal, boom. Under these three conditions, the probabilities of recession is 0.2, normal is 0.5, boom is 0.3. And the returns, expected returns of X security are minus 0 0.15, 0 0.20, 0 0.60. And for return for Y security is 0 0.20, 0 0.30, 0 0.40. Calculate the expected return and risk. Now see here, two securities are given X and Y. And we are required to calculate the expected return and risk. Risk will be measured in terms of standard deviation. And the formula for standard deviation is summation PD square under root. So how to calculate the risk and return? I'm showing it clearly here. See carefully. Calculation of expected return and risk. First of all, I'm taking security X. The economic conditions, recession, normal, boom, whatever is given in the problem, I have written here. Now return of security X, minus 0 0.15, 0 0.20, 0 0.60. These are the three securities given. Probabilities are given 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.3. So these three columns, whatever is given in the problem, I have taken. Now, first of all, I need ER, expected return. Multiply the return with the probability. Return 0 0.15. 0 0.15 into 0 0.2. You will get 0 0.03. Minus into plus will become minus. Then 0 0.2 into 0 0.5. 0 0.10. 0 0.6 into 0 0.3. 0 0.18. Take the total of these, you will get expected return 0 0.25. One answer we got, expected return 0 0.25. Now we need, we need the deviations. D stands for deviations. R minus ER. R values are here. And ER is 0 0.25. So R minus 0 0.25. Minus 0 0.15. Minus 0 0.25. You will get minus 0 0.4. Similarly, 0 0.20 minus 0 0.25, you get minus 0 0.05. Similarly, 0 0.60 minus 0 0.25, you get 0 0.35. We got D values, deviations. Square the deviations. 0 0.4 into 0 0.4, you'll get 0 0.16. 0 0.05 into 0 0.05, 0 0.0025. 0 0.35 into 0 0.35, 0 0.1225. Square the deviations. Now, PD square, multiply probability with D square, probability is here 0.2 into 0.16, you will get 0 
Similarly, 0.5 into 0 0.0025, 0 0.00125. Similarly, 0.3 into 0 0.1225, 0.03675. Add the total, you will get 0 0.07. This is the total summation PD square. Now it is asking you to calculate expected return and risk. Expected return 0 0.25. Risk is measured in terms of standard deviation. The formula for standard deviation summation PD square under root 0 0.07 root. You will get 0 0.2646. That's all. This is the method of calculating expected return and risk for security X. Exactly same procedure we have to adopt for security Y. Same three columns given in the problem, economic conditions, return and probability. Multiply return with probability to get expected return. The total of expected return 0 0.31. One part completed, expected. Now risk. For calculating risk, we need D, D square, PB square. So first we calculate D, R minus ER. So R minus 0 0.31. 0 0.20 minus 0 0.31 minus 0 0.11. 0 0.30 minus 0 0.031 minus 0 0.01 0 0.40 minus 0 0.031 0 0.09 Square these values, you will get D square. Now multiply P into D square, you will get PD square. Take the total, 0 0.0049. This is the summation PD square. Now, expected return 0 0.31. And risk, standard deviation, summation PD square under root. So 0 0.0049 under root 0 0.07. That's all. This is the method of calculating expected return and standard deviation. That's it. Now I'm starting the next problem. Problem number 10. A company issues 50,000 irredeemable 8% debentures of rupees 10 each at a premium of 10%. Previous problems we have calculated the expected return standard deviation but from here onwards we have the problems on cost of capital. Specific cost of capital that means cost of debt, cost of preference, cost of equity, KD, KP, KE those problems we are going to do now. So for 10th one a company issues 50,000 irredeemable debt means perpetual debt. The company is not redeeming. Irredeemable 8% debentures of 10 each at a premium of 10%. When the company issues the debentures, it has issued at a premium. The cost of flotation are 2%. The cost of raising the capital is called cost of flotation. Assuming the tax rate of 60%, calculate cost of debenture before tax and after tax. We have to calculate KD, cost of debt, before tax and after tax. So first of all, for calculating KD, you must see whether it is irredeemable or redeemable because the formulas will be different. So here, the debentures are irredeemable. So formula is I divided by NP into 100. This is before tax. So here, calculation of cost of irredeemable debt, KD. So KD before tax, easy formula, I divided by NP into 100. I stands for interest on debentures. See the problem. 50,000 debentures of 10 each. So 50,000 into 10, 5 lakh. So face value of all debenture 5 lakh. And the rate of interest on debenture is given in the problem 8%. So 8% of 5 lakh. I is equal to interest on debenture 8% of 5 lakh, 40,000. This is the interest. NP stands for net proceeds on issue. Here you have to be careful. Net proceeds on issue. So at the time of issue of debenture, how much net amount the company received? So face value. Face value is 5 lakh rupees. Plus premium. It is given in the problem the company issued the debenture at 10% premium. That means 10, per, 10 rupees debenture is issued at 11 rupees. So 10% of 5 lakh, 10% of 5 lakh is 50,000, 50,000 is the premium, minus flotation cost, the flotation cost is 2%, these are the expenditure incurred by the company to raise the capital, like advertisement, making the prospectors and receiving the money, paying commission, 
all these are called flotation cost without incurring flotation cost it will be difficult to raise the money so 2% of issue price the issue price is 550000 including premium the 2% of 550000 you get 11000 so 5 lakh rupees is the face value plus 10000 rupees is the oh, sorry 50000 rupees is the premium so 5 lakh plus 50000 5 lakh 50000 on 5 lakh 50000 2 percent flotation cost 11000 so 550 minus 11 5 lakh 39000 is the net proceeds np say so we got the interest charges 40000 and net proceeds are 5 lakh 39000 now we need kd before tax I divide by NP into 100. 40,000 divided by 5,39,000 into 100. You will get 7.42%. This is the KD before tax. Now, if you want to find out KD after tax, simply multiply KD before tax into 1 minus T. T stands for tax rate. In the problem, the tax rate is given as 60%. The so T is equal to 0.6. 60% means 60 by 100, you will get 0 0.6. So here, KD after tax is equal to KD before tax into 1 minus T. So KD before tax, how much we got? 7.42 into 1 minus T, tax rate, 60%. 60% 60 means 0 0.6, so 1 minus 0.6. So 1 minus 0 0.6 is 0 0.4. So 7.42 into 0 0.4, 2.97. This is the KD after tax. <clears throat> this is the first problem where we have we are calculating cost of capital. KD before tax and after tax. So you have to remember the form. Next problem. Problem number 11. A company issued 10% perpetual debt. Perpetual means irredeemable. Continuous. The company is not taking back. So a company issued 10% perpetual debt of 10 lakh rupees. So interest will be 10% of 10 lakh. You will get 1 lakh rupees annual interest on debt. The company is in 55% tax bracket. So T is equal to 55% or 0 0.55. 55 divided by 100. You will get 0 0.55 T. Find out the cost of debt after tax. If it is issued at par value and B point issued at 10% premium. We don't have any flotation cost and uh, two cases we have to find out KD after tax. It is not asking you to calculate before tax. Only if it is, ask, it is asking you to calculate after tax. The formula KD after tax is I divided by NP into 1 minus T into 100. You will get KD after tax. Now, see carefully. Calculation of cost of perpetual debt. Issued at par. First case is issued at par. Par means face value. No discount, no premium. The face value. It will be issued at face value. Issued at par. KD after taxes I by NP into 1 minus T into 100. Just now I told you the formula. I stands for interest. It is given in the problem 10% interest. Always interest will be calculated on the face value. Face value is 10 lakh. So 10% of 10 lakh is 1 lakh. We got the I value 1 lakh. Net proceeds. Net proceeds on issue. The debentures are the debt is issued at par value. Face value. No premium, no discount, no flotation cost. So here net proceeds is equal to face value 10 lakh. T is equal to tax rate. It is given 55%. So 0 0.55, that's all, all the values we have. Now KD after tax is equal to I by NP into 1 minus T into 100. So 1 lakh divided by 10 lakh into 1 minus 0 0.55. 1 minus 0 0.55, you'll get 0 0.45. So 1 lakh by 10 lakh into 0 0.45 into 100. 4.5% is the KD after tax. KD after tax. First case completed where debt is issued at Par face value. Second, B point issued at 10% premium. Assume that debentures are issued at 10% premium. So 10 lakh rupees is the face value. 10% premium, 1 lakh. 
तो 10 लाख फेस वैल्यू 1 लाख प्रीमियम तो टोटल नेट प्रोसीड्स विल बी 11 लाख्स हियर नेट प्रोसीड्स आर 1 और 10 लाख only face value no premium second case issued at 10 percent premium so net proceed equal face value plus 10 percent premium 10 lakh plus 1 lakh 11 lakh now substitute in that formula interest is same 1 lakh i is equal to interest 1 lakh net proceeds will become 11 lakh into 1 minus 0.45 into 100 4.09 is the kd after tax in second case 10 percent premium where first case issued at par, second case issued at premium. That's all. So this is the end of problem number 11. Now see the 12th problem. X limited has 10% irredeemable perpetual debt of rupees 1 lakh. The tax rate is 50%. First of all, the face value of the debt is 1 lakh. And rate of interest is 10%. So 10% of 1 lakh is 10,000 is the interest I. Tax rate 50%. 50 by 100, 0 0.5. Determine the cost of debt before and after tax. If the debt is issued at par value, A point, B point at 10% discount, and C point at 10% premium. There is no flotation cost. Under three situations, we have to calculate KD before tax as well as after tax so one by one we will take up issued at par a case issued at face value no premium no discount so kd before tax i divide by np into 100 don't multiply 1 minus t if you take 1 minus t here it will become after tax but in the problem it is asking you to calculate before tax as well as after tax so first we calculate before tax without multiplying 1 minus t. So I interest on debt, the rate of interest 10%, face value 1 lakh, 10% of 1 lakh, 10,000. Net proceeds, face value, no premium, no discount because par value, so 1 lakh. KD before tax, 10,000 by 1 lakh into 100, 10%. We got KD before tax. Now we need KD after tax. So whatever KD before tax you got, multiply with 1 minus t. 1 minus 0.5 is 0.5. So KD before tax we got 10% into 1 minus 0.5. 10 into 0.5 is 5. Over. First case completed. KD before tax and KD after tax. Now second case issued at 10% discount. So discount will be deducted from face value. Face value of the debt is 1 lakh. 10% of 1 lakh is 10,000. Deduct 10,000. Remember, premium will be added and discount will be deducted. So here, 1 lakh minus 10,000, 90,000 is the net proceeds. Now, KD before tax. 10,000 is the interest, 90,000 is the NP into 100. 11.11 is the KD before tax. Now, if you want KD after tax, Multiply KD before tax into 1 minus T, 1 minus 0.5. So 11.11 into 0.5, 5.56% is the KD after tax. Two cases completed. The last case is issued at 10% premium. Premium will be added to face value. So net proceeds is equal to face value 1 lakh plus 10% premium. So 1 lakh 10,000 is the net proceeds. KD before tax, I divide by NP. So 10,000 divided by 1 lakh 10,000 into 100. You will get 9.09 .09 is the KD before tax. Now if you want KD after tax, multiply KD before tax into 1 minus T. 1 minus 0.5. So 9.09 .09 into 1 minus 0.5, you will get 4.55%. This is the KD after tax. So in this problem, in this video, three problems I have explained. Nine, uh, three or four, nine, 10, 11, 12, four problems I have explained. So all the four problems are regarding cost of capital and particularly KD. KD and irredeemable debt. There are two types of KD, irredeemable and redeemable. In the next video, we'll start the problems on redeemable debt where the formula will get changed inshallah we'll continue the next problem
in the next video.